A bus full of Japanese high school kids is zapped to another world. Most of them are granted some special abilities by a gift. However, four of them are left completely unpowered. The class, faced with the threat of an approaching dragon, decides to leave the four unpowered students behind. You know, uh, survival of the fittest, right? They take off, those four students are left behind. Two of them die pretty darn quick. Leaves two people alive. Tomochika Danura and Yogiri Takato. Thing is, Yogiri's slept through this whole ordeal so far. And so Tomochika has to wake him up and tell him like, yo, we're in a lot of trouble here. She's kind of freaking out, like, there's dead bodies and we're probably next. And Yogiri's like, yo, dragon. <laughs> cool. He's not too thrilled about the whole thing. He doesn't really care, honestly. He's just kind of like, Meh, dying by a dragon might be kind of interesting. But Tomachika grabs him and she's like, come on, we got to figure this out. And he's like, girls are nice. Okay, fine. We won't die. He looks at the dragon. He goes, die. And the thing literally drops dead. Welcome to my instant death ability is so overpowered. No one in this world stands a chance against me. I'm stumbling over this title because my God, it's long. This one is released in English by J Novel Club. It's written by Tsuyoshi Fujitaka who actually is the author of another J Novel Club series called well, My Big Sister Lives in a Fantasy World, which actually was one of their earlier titles. Uh, that one's complete at seven volumes. This one is complete in Japan at 14 volumes, and J Novel Club has already published up to volume number 13, so they are almost finished with this one as well. There is an anime that's been announced that is currently set to premiere in January of 2024. Okay, real talk for a second. I'm going to say four words. Four. And depending on your reaction to those four words is going to A, say something about whether you want to read this book, and B, maybe what kind of person you are, but you know what, that's between you and whatever celestial deity you do or do not believe in whatever okay so here we go death by dragon dick no you did not hear that incorrectly that is that is literally literally what happens um yeah that that what the okay so i like read that like, like, literally what happens is, like, these two other students that die, they get impaled by this thing. And, like, Yogiri looks out the window and he's like, oh, that thing they got impaled with, that looks like, uh, the thing's junk. Yeah, great. Um, at this point, I nearly throw the book, okay? Because I'm just, like, I'm fucking over light novels in this stupid shit. but I'm a grown man with bills because I didn't post on YouTube for a year and a half they've demonetized my channel and I spent money on this so I don't throw the book mainly because I'm reading it on my Kobo and Kobos are damned expensive and because I'm a grown-ass man with, like, bills and my YouTube channel's being demonetized. And because I spent my money on this damn book, I decide to finish it because I spent the money on it. I'm gonna tell you all, kids getting killed by erect dragon phalluses was not on my reading bingo list for frickin' 2023. This is how I choose to use my free time. Jesus. I really got to do some evaluation of my life choice. This has taught me, though, that from now on, if I have any doubts, I should read the free preview. That's off. Okay. Ray it. Somewhat over.
because the upside, I mean, the good news is the book only goes up from there. I mean, I mean, where do you go? Like, where do you go lower than that? Uh, oh, never mind. It's I've seen enough Japanese media. There's lots of lower points that it could go, uh, but thankfully it doesn't. Thankfully that that that's as low as the bar gets set, and it's right at the start. So uh, I mean I don't know. Maybe, maybe this is Fujitaka just kind of weeding out people, going like, huh, what can you? What, what's your tolerance level here, folks? I don't know. Uh, the other thing is that knowing my big sister lives in a fantasy world, I read the first volume of that. It actually was pretty good. Fujitaka's work is like very tongue in cheek. And when you read the rest of this book, you realize like a lot of this is really just kind of rifting on the whole OP main character thing. And like it's kind of parody ish. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the thing is, God, I'm so flustered because of the, because of the goddamn dragon Jesus, Jesus like oh my god and yeah like Yugiri even makes the comment that like didn't you know like dragon busts stuff is like a thing like that's that's like I didn't think I'd actually experience this particular genre I don't know if it is actually a thing I don't know if that was just like a joke that <laughs> friggin Fujitaka put into this thing I hope to God it is, and I am not going to Google it to find out otherwise. If you want to, have at it. Have at it. I'm not. Anyway. So the book continues on. I haven't even gotten to the review. I don't know how far I've been in this. Anyway. The only thing that makes this thing work is probably the characters of Tomochika and y Yogi. Because... The whole point is, is that Yogiri literally does just kill things dead by wishing death upon them. If he wants something to die, they die. And like, it's so OP that there, there is hints. Uh, they, they never outwardly state it, but just based on what I'm seeing, I literally think the dude could look at the ground, like at the planet itself and go die and could kill the whole planet. This is my thinking. Like, it's that ridiculous, okay? But what's really funny about this thing is, is, like, you, you kind of get the feeling like Yogiri's whole meh kind of attitude towards things. Like, he is just as chill as whatever. He sleeps whenever he gets tired. He just doesn't get his... He doesn't really get all that ruffled by things. And it's probably just because, like, the dude just has no real value on life or death because death just comes so easy to him. But, funny enough, he actually has somewhat of a moral code. Even though he doesn't really think much about killing things, he realizes that, hey, if I just go around killing completely without reason, I'm a monster. So, he's got his creed. Come at me, die. Don't come at me, we're good. We can deal with each other. Tomochika works because she's not a scream at every horrible thing that ever happens female protagonist she's made of slightly sterner stuff in fact even throughout the book she herself is kind of like why is it i'm not completely losing my mind with all this blood and death that i have seen over the course of these couple of days and there is actually an answer to this that i'm not going to spoil but and i mean regardless and i don't know whether it's a good answer but there is an answer to this and but regardless, it at least makes her a not insufferable female character. If she was always screaming at everything, if she was always hanging off of Yogiri, and she was always like, you know, oh, don't kill, that's so immoral, and blah, 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 it would get really tired, really old, really fast. And like I said, even with Yogiri, like, he's just kind of so passive about what's going on around him that he just doesn't seem like that intimidating a character, even though, like I said, the dude could probably kill a planet if he wished it. The one thing that I will say that kind of makes me go, okay, the writing on this is like slightly above board, is that there is a very definite 
juxtaposition happening between the Japanese characters who have already been in this world for a while and become ridiculously superpowered, who are cruel and who view human beings as beneath them, and Yogiri, who is literally capable of killing anything, who has actually got a moral compass. And it's kind of interesting to me when I was reading this book, that was the one thing that kind of struck me, that I was like, these people that don't have a lot of power initially, who gain ridiculous amounts of power, lose their humanity. Whereas this guy who basically has like a god power, like things, you live or die based on my whim, actually has a moral compass, actually thinks about the fact that killing indiscriminately makes him a monster and so he refuses to do it there's actually this one point where there's all sorts of bugs and to which she goes like just kill them they're so gross and yogiri's like yo if i just killed things because they were gross that just makes me awful like come on deal with it 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 was just yeah as i said there's moments in this book that definitely make it seem that the author is doing this kind of tongue-in-cheek. And that's probably why I actually did finish the book, because A, the two main characters were actually somewhat entertaining. B, because of the author's way of putting these two different power dynamics against each other, made me go, well, maybe they know a little bit about what they're doing and there's actually something that they're trying to say with this. And... Also, it's just kind of interesting the little bit of the world building that goes into this. I didn't really go into this when I did the quick little synopsis, because, I mean, where else do you stop with, like, you know, dragons? Um, but the whole thing about this world is that Japanese students have been getting kidnapped to this world for a while. Like, this is not a new thing. And it's interesting that because it's been happening for a while and because a lot of the Japanese people summoned to this world are either ridiculously powerful or those who aren't powerful are usually placed in positions of power by their former classmates. It is interesting to see like how the author has manipulated this world and shown how the influence of these Japanese people has changed this world. And I, it doesn't go into it in super great depth in this first volume. I mean, outside of demonstrating, obviously, that there's Japanese food, that there's many Japanese customs that are even the locals have adopted, that, um, you know, that in terms of the locals themselves, that there is sort of an undercurrent of unrest and anger at these Japanese interlopers that have come into their world. Uh... Also, I will say that because the Japanese have been here for a little while, thankfully we don't have to go through the main character inventing bloody mayonnaise and soy sauce. Thank God. But I think it's also interesting, and actually this goes back to something that I was watching a, a video on Pause and Select. And they were talking about something that I don't think that we talk about a whole lot in terms of isekai, which is the idea that the Japanese in isekai are basically imperialists that are coming in and altering an existing culture for themselves. There is this definite idea of superiority in the fact that isekai, even cooking isekai, presents the fact that existing food items in this other world aren't good until the Japanese come and apply Japanese sensibilities to them. Uh, you know, the same thing of like, we bring Japanese law, we bring Japanese government, we bring like, like there, there's, there's definitely that element to isekai. And I mean, we can argue about how intentional it is on the part of a lot of the authors, whatever. I'm not even here to argue the point. But it did make me think about the fact that when I was reading this book about the fact that this is definitely a world where the Japanese have put themselves because of these abilities they have at the absolute top tier of the power structure and just what kind of resentment that is creating in the populace. And 
It was probably one of the first books that I really saw that as a thing. Um, maybe because there's already Japanese in power. You know what I mean? Like a lot of isekai were just following whoever the first person summoned there was. Or who, if there's been people summoned before them, they were in such small numbers that it didn't make like a massive world impact, right? Um, yeah, it, it just... Like I said, like this book, honestly, I had so many, it was a wild ride, right? I went from a complete disgust to, eh, it's kind of mid, to, well, oh, I mean, there's, there's some okay points in this. Do those okay points make up for the other stuff? But, like, I'm not going to read any more of it. I'll be honest. Um, one and done on this series. Uh, I, I just, I... I, I just, I just don't trust, I just don't trust Fuchitaka enough to like read any more of it. Cause I'm like, if that's how this one started, where the hell are we going to go beyond this? I just, I just, I don't, I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, it was a thing. Anyway, those are my thoughts about my instant death ability is so overpowered. No one in this other world stands a chance against me. We'll just call it death ability overpowered because holy, that's a, that's just too much of a mouthful. In any case, I mean, I'm coming obviously super late to the party here. I mean, I saw that this thing got an anime announcement, so I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll look at it. And while well, I looked at it, uh, but obviously it's been running for a long time. I mean, like I said, it's almost complete in English. What do you guys think? Anybody read this one? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts? Keep them spoiler free because obviously there's a lot of people that haven't read this. There's going to be people that probably will watch the anime that probably don't want to be entirely spoiled. So I welcome your thoughts. Uh, is the dragon incident like the lowest low of this series? I am kind of curious. I'm just kind of curious. I, like, I doesn't, it's not going to change my opinion. I'm not going to go and start reading the rest of this, but, uh, but I'm just curious. A morbid curiosity. In any case, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. That's really fantastic. And I greatly appreciate that. And it helps YouTube know that, you know what? My channel's not complete trash. I appreciate that. So thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video where hopefully I don't have to mention anything about Dragon Choke. Bye bye for doing